This video is made possible by the amazing support of Angel Spitz Patreon. Subscribe to Angel Spitz Patreon and get your very own planet 300 light years away. Yes, yes you will. Plus a new track and a new video each month and it's just bloody amazing. Remember, if you like this video, please like, subscribe and get notifications. The Gospel of Merch according to Angel Spit, Chapter 3 importing, place, and promotion. Following on from the chapters on product and manufacture. Links in the description below if you missed them. Once again, this is geared towards smaller bands uh, who are just starting out with merch and focusing on online sales as opposed to live gig sales. Although you can obviously apply all this stuff to live shows. Importing. If you're getting larger quantities, it might make better sense to deal directly with overseas manufacturers. Manufacturing usually takes place in countries such as China or India or Mexico. Now you can buy everything from the US, like uh, silicon wristbands or USB keys, etc. But it's most likely that the American company is getting them made overseas anyway. And considering that the United States has almost no manufacture. So if you want to cut out the middle people, here's how. Sites such as Alibaba.com connect customers with manufacturers, suppliers, exporters in China, India, Mexico, Bangladesh, and other countries with strong manufacture. The suppliers have been rated so you can see other people's experience with them. I have worked with several companies on Alibaba and I haven't had any major problems. I researched their ethics and they were okay. If you have ethical questions, you can research the companies to see their policies on working conditions, using dangerous chemicals and other important issues. As mentioned, very few companies 100% manufacture in the United States, and those that do have a significantly higher price point than the imported goods. To relay a story to outline this conundrum, I once helped an artist with their merch. When I suggested they use foreign manufacturers, they were opposed because they wanted to support local companies, which is awesome. Awesome. However, they ended up paying about three times what a foreign company would have charged. So their profit margin was tiny, which means they couldn't pay off their album. When they ran on tour, they ran it at a loss because their merch price was too high because the manufacturing price was too high. So their sales were terrible and most of your touring money comes from merch. They lost on the tour, they lost on their album, they broke up. The sad irony was that their t-shirts and their other cool stuff like silicon wristies and the USB drives and the caps, they were all manufactured overseas anyway. The US company was just a middle management type thing. It's great that their money went to local business, but their money could have gone into their gas tank and towards their next album. So it's your choice where you draw the line. Quantity. This brings us to a big question. How much merch should I produce? And what will it cost? The best way to get an exact number on the amount of merch you're gonna need is by selling it before you produce it. And you do that with a crowdfunding campaign, like Kickstarter. Once the crowdfunding campaign is done, you will know how much of each merch item you're gonna need, plus their specifications, like t-shirt sizes. And you need to know that in order to order the tees. Another advantage is that you get the money within two weeks of the campaign finishing, so you don't have to self-fund the merch. Now that you have your quantities, my advice is to multiply that by two and order those numbers, as that will cover your merch needs for the next few months, maybe even a year. And if you're going on tour, multiply that number by three. Refer to the magic number spiel I gave in the previous video. Remember, it takes two months to have everything ready after the crowdfunding campaign has ended. And you need to let your audience know a reasonable release date. So what does it all cost? These quotes are rough, maybe within 20% of what you'll find. And remember, you'll need to add shipping from the manufacturer to you. So this is what we got. 250 CDs at $3.50 each is 875 bucks. 50 t-shirts at $6 each is 300 bucks. 100 one inch button badges is 35 bucks. 112 by 18 posters is 200 bucks. A thousand stickers is 150 bucks. 500 silicon wristbands is 300 bucks. 500 USB drives is 1500 bucks. The total is $2,360. Keep in mind that you could sell all of this stuff for 12 to 15 thousand dollars which means ten to thirteen thousand dollars in profit and that's paid for the album and the tour keep in mind that if you sell these things online you will need to ship them and we'll get to that shortly Place. there are many different distribution methods each have their pros and cons so let's begin Profit margin. Price points. Whether it's your merch table or your online store, you need to have different price points to cater to people's budgets. You need to have merch which is free, something you can give away, like 
stickers or a one inch button badge or wallpapers for your phone. Maybe even a download with a single on it. Five bucks, sticker packs, button packs, a random pack with a CD that you're trying to get rid of, silicon wristbands, 10 bucks, a CD, 20 bucks, a t-shirt or a vinyl, 50 bucks, a hoodie or a cool bundle, maybe a t-shirt, vinyl and a poster, 100 bucks, something cool and collectible like a DIY t-shirt, signed drumsticks, and signed drumsticks are even cooler if you don't have a drummer. Also, research prices. Stay competitive, but don't undercut yourself. Bundles and merch packs. Bundle deals are awesome because people love a deal. Combine a $10 CD with a $20 t-shirt and sell them for 25 bucks, which is a saving of five bucks, and that will entice people to buy it. She's a trained killer. Different web stores. There are heaps of different types of web stores. Here's the ones I've had the best luck with. Bandcamp. Bandcamp specializes in selling digital and physical music, but they also sell merch. As you sell on Bandcamp, the site collects all of your customers' emails. Now, Bandcamp is awesome because they'll send an alert to all your customers every time you add something new. So they're going to tell them about it. It also makes suggestions to help customers discover other bands that are in a similar genre. So your genre hashtags are super important. The downside is their 15% commission, which I personally think is a little steep. Plus their sales back end is a little weak. Regardless, you need a band camp. Etsy. Etsy is awesome. Its community makes it easier for shoppers to stumble upon your shop. Their fees are fair and their back end is pretty good. Etsy does allow smaller digital downloads, but at the time of recording this, does not allow full albums. I definitely recommend an Etsy. Shopify. Shopify gives you total control over how your shop looks. You can also integrate it into MailChimp, Facebook, and other sites. The back end is awesome. The digital downloading engine is great. You have much more control over sales and discounts and vouchers. The only drawback is the fee. You need to generate a certain amount before the Shopify fee is more economical and viable than the Etsy fee. So if you sell more than 700 bucks a month on Etsy, it would be more economical to go with Shopify and it's 29 bucks a month fee. The issue with the band is that the sales increase around the time of the release and then often slow down in the off season. So Shopify might only be economical for part of the time. Merch fulfillment. You can hire a merch fulfillment company to do your bidding. They will take a cut, but they're gonna free up your time. I prefer to fill all the merch and the shop orders myself, as it's a really nice way to make contact with my awesome supporters. That's you. Plus I can throw in free stuff like stickers or a handwritten thank you note. It just makes the order more awesome. Mail and shipping. Shipping your orders out is a really big topic and I'm only gonna dip my toes into it here. Get shipping software like Click and Send or Stamps.com. These will generate shipping labels, so all you have to do is drop them into the prepaid mail slot at your local USPS, which means no more standing in line. You'll need postage scales, but some of the software will send these to you for free. Here's a tip. Stamps.com has a monthly subscription fee. I think it's about 12 bucks a month, but they secretly offer a free version, which is called Small Business or Etsy seller or something like that. You'll have to call them to get this account and you're gonna have to haggle them a bit because it's not public knowledge. Shipping options. There are many ways to ship an item. This is for people in the USA, so it's specifically for USPS. Different countries' shipping services have kind of similar services. Priority Mail is fast, secure, it has tracking, and it comes with its own free box. It can get anywhere in the USA within three days. But the downside, it's not cheap. It costs $6 to ship a CD. And considering that most people want free shipping, it's not a good deal. First class is for orders under one pound and thinner than three quarters of an inch. It gets anywhere in the USA within three to five days. It's not as secure, it doesn't have tracking, and you need to supply your own envelope. But it's cheap. It costs $1.60 to ship a CD, which is great because it accommodates free shipping. Media Mail is awesome. I'm telling you, it was made for bands. Probably literally. It's cheap. Packages can be almost any size. You'll need to supply the packaging. It does come with tracking, but the downside is it takes up to seven days to reach its destination. It charges by the pound or part thereof, and it'll cost you $2.90 to ship one pound anywhere in the USA, or $3.40 to ship two pounds. The only catch is it must contain media, so a CD, VHS, books. I often ship said media with a t-shirt, and I've never got into any issues over it. 
Media Mail is perfect if you offer free shipping. International Mail is expensive, but there's a trick how to make it cheaper. USPS International charges mail by weight and thickness. If the package is thicker than three quarters of an inch, it bumps it into a higher price bracket, which is nearly twice as expensive. Example, a t-shirt and a CD are thicker than three quarters of an inch. So it's gonna cost 24 bucks to ship that to Australia. So here's the trick. You know those vac seal food preserver things that you see on the cooking channel? Not that I watch the cooking channel. Buy one. They cost 50 bucks. Put a t-shirt and a CD in the little plastic bag thingy, suck all the air out of it, and then seal it. So the vac sealer thingy is gonna squeeze the thickness down to less than three quarters of an inch, which now makes the shipping 12 bucks instead of 24. So the vacuum seal is gonna pay for itself in five shipments. Although International Mail does have tracking, it can be difficult to track it once it leaves the USA. You may need to use that country's postage system to track your package if required. Be aware that customs duties and tax can be added to your package once it arrives in its destination country. And usually your customer will need to pay for said charges owed, which makes your customer very unhappy, which is bad it's important to honestly declare the value of the package. Some dishonest people will say that the package was a gift and it's only worth $5. These people are naughty. Naughty people. <clears throat> if you are one of these naughty people, don't put the sales receipt with the actual amount in it in with the order. Because if customs opens it, they're gonna find the sales receipt and this is gonna cause problems. But instead, put in a birthday card or something. Your customer will get a laugh out of that. I should mention, I have had no issues with USPS. I've shipped literally thousands of packages and one or two of them have gone missing. Once or twice I've received a small adjustment to the cost of the shipment as the item may have been too thick or too heavy. So they definitely do check the thickness and the weight and they will bill you if you get it wrong. Promotion. The shop needs to look good. Run ads. Fun fact, about 1% of your fans will purchase, but the better the designs, the better the product photos, and the better the advertising, you can increase that measly 1%. Collect people's emails when they buy from you and add them to your email list. Just make sure you have their permission. Email lists are a great way to reach your audience with news and new releases and merch and craziness and videos. As mentioned before, Bandcamp collects emails. They'll also allow you to send a newsletter to everyone on your Bandcamp list. You can also export those emails and pull them into software like MailChimp. A great way to increase the people on your Bandcamp email list is to give away free tracks, like free, and specify that people need to leave their emails to get the download. Make sure you take good, clear, well-lit photos for the merch. Even better if you can have people wearing them in lifestyle shots. This will all help push online sales. Thus concludes the final installment in The Gospel of Merch According to Angel Spit, Chapter 3 importing, place, and promotion. Remember, like and subscribe Angel Spit's YouTube so you can get notified when we release more videos, and we release a lot of videos. Remember to join Angel Spit's Patreon and see these amazing videos early. And I hope this helps. I really hope this helps, because the world needs your rock. rock.